Welcome to this full flight tutorial for beginners on the new DC Designs Concorde in Microsoft Flight Sim. This tutorial is from a runway start so the engines are already running. A cold and dark start tutorial will follow at a later date. I've also planned my flight in the simulator menu before starting. A tutorial for how to plan flights in Microsoft Flight Sim is linked in the description. When it comes to calculating how much fuel you need to load for a Concorde flight, I've put some handy numbers in the description below. Note that this add-on doesn't currently have a virtual flight engineer to trim the fuel tanks and manage the centre of gravity. This is frustrating because it means that unless you learn the flight engineer role in addition to the pilot role, the fuel CG will be out of trim for some of the flight. However, as Microsoft Flight Sim is a pretty simple simulation, you can still follow a realistic Concorde flight profile and procedures without worrying about the fuel trim at all. If you do want to delve into the complexities of managing the fuel system, the manual contains a pretty comprehensive explanation. With the introduction out of the way, it's time to fly. Let's jump inside. Our first job on the autopilot panel is to set the frequency of the ILS at our destination airport so it's ready for our arrival. That's 109.30 for this flight, and we're going to set that on both the active and standby frequencies on the left side. We'll then repeat that process on the right hand side panel. When you start on the runway, you'll find the visor is already down. All we then have to do is lower the nose to 5 degrees using our flaps hotkey or the switch on the control panel. We'll then set our initial altitude of 28,000 feet, which is standard for most Concorde flights, into the autopilot panel. For takeoff, we'll need our afterburners on, so we'll use the piano keys on the pedestal to switch those on. We're now ready for takeoff, so we'll bring those throttles up, light the afterburners, and start our takeoff roll. Shortly after takeoff, a lot of things happen very quickly, so make sure you're paying attention for the next bit. We have a fair amount of fuel on board, so rotation is around 200 knots. Don't worry too much about the numbers, just start pulling back on the stick at around 150 knots and the plane will take off when it has enough speed. As soon as we have positive rate of climb, we can put the landing gear up. Then once we hit 250 knots, turn those afterburners off, but keep the throttles at full. Bring the nose up and activate Flight Director 1 and Autopilot 1. Once Autopilot is active, hit the INS switch and the aircraft will begin to follow our flight plan. We'd also put the Autopilot in Max Climb and Altitude Acquire modes. The plane will now climb to our initial altitude of 28,000 feet, continuing to follow our flight plan and you can take your hands off the controls. Conditions are a bit rough today, so on the upper overhead panel, we'll switch on the engine anti-ice and on the lower overhead panel, the visor de-ice. At 28,000 feet, the plane levels off and goes into altitude hold mode. So that it doesn't run away while we're straight and level, we're going to turn on auto throttle 1 and switch on Mach hold mode. We'll now set our final cruising altitude of 60,000 feet into the autopilot panel and engage max climb mode and altitude acquire. Now we'll also disconnect auto throttle 1 to give us manual control of the throttles again. We'll switch the afterburners back on and make sure our throttles are fully forward. The plane then begins its climb through supersonic speeds up to 60,000 feet and Mach 2. As we pass through Mach 2 during our climb, we no longer need the afterburners, so we'll switch off the piano keys and continue at what's called full drive throttle. Somewhere around 53,000 feet the max cruise light will illuminate. This means the plane will now happily sit in a cruise climb somewhere between 50 and 60,000 feet at around Mach 2. Top of descent is generally around 250 nautical miles from your destination. The distance to go calculation seems to be broken in this plane at the moment, so you'll just have to use the minimap to eyeball that one based on your waypoints. For top of descent we want our auto throttle enabled and we want our desired airspeed set to 350 knots. Press airspeed acquire and the plane will decelerate. Set your bottom of descent altitude on the autopilot panel. This tends to be the elevation of your destination airport plus 2000 feet. Put the plane into altitude acquire mode and vertical speed mode. Use the vertical speed switch on the pedestal to set 3000 feet per minute descent. As you pass through 15,000 feet on your descent, set your desired airspeed to 325 knots and press airspeed acquire. 
As the descent continues, Concorde becomes lower and slower, until it reaches speeds and altitudes more suited to a regular airliner. Your next deceleration point is 10,000 feet, where you set 250 knots, then press airspeed acquire. When you reach 250 knots, set the nose to 5 degrees. Your final deceleration point is at your bottom of descent, where you set an approach speed of 170 knots and set the nose to fully down. The aircraft should now be in a fairly stable configuration to begin its approach. When the plane begins to turn towards final approach, and keep an eye on the minimap to know when that is, you'll want to switch your nerve source to radio and then activate the localizer follow button on the autopilot panel. At this point you'll also want to set the course of your destination ILS on the autopilot panel, so you can see here we're changing it to 237. You'll know the plane has picked up the localizer signal when you get a glide slope indication on your PFD. And the HSI looks like the picture here with a miles to go countdown. At this point you can lower the landing gear. Now this plane has a couple of bugs on approach which I'm going to run through quickly before I show you a successful approach and landing. The first issue is that although your plane is displaying the localizer, it may not be following it. In that case, just switch the nav source quickly again, back to GPS, then back to radio. There's a slightly more serious issue, which is common across a lot of aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim. It must be something to do with the default autopilot, where as the plane reaches the final waypoint, it puts the throttles to idle, and no matter what you do, whether you activate approach mode or disable auto throttle and put your physical throttles to full, the end result is a fairly hard and premature landing. I hope that one day a Sobo will fix this as it's been there since day one. So as I was saying, once your localizer is active and your gear is down, you can activate land mode on the autopilot panel. At the same time, enable Flight Director 2 and Autopilot 2 and make sure the course on the co-pilot side of the autopilot panel matches the course on the left side. Now as soon as the plane reaches the glide slope it will start to descend on it. The plane should also continue to follow the localizer, but localizer and approach mode as a whole in this plane is far from perfect. If for some reason your plane ends up too far to the left or too far to the right of the runway during approach, this is a bug and you'll need to correct for it manually. This is how a successful ILS landing should look in the DC Designs Concorde. Although this is technically an auto land, I'm still applying very small corrections on the way down just to keep it on the localizer. The plane is still completely in charge of the vertical part of the descent and we do achieve a successful touchdown. As soon as you touch down, hold your reverse thrust key or move your throttles back to the reverse position and hold down your brake key or your physical toe brakes. Congratulations, you've now made a full supersonic flight in the DC Designs Concorde. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. There's more DC Designs Concorde content to come, and also on my channel you'll find videos of Concords for previous flight sims, such as the PSS Concorde for Flight Sim 2004 and the Colimata Concorde for X-Plane if you'd like to compare. If you have questions, please ask in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you next time.